Hey, I'm Matt with Meat Church. Let's smoke a brisket. We're jumping into what it's all about. If you come to Texas, we're a brisket state. This is where it started. This is where it was perfected. This is where it's the best, in my opinion. And today, I'm going to show you how we do it in Texas. But before I go any further, I've got a special guest, my good buddy, Chad Ward, director of barbecue marketing at Traeger, owner of Whiskey Bent. I'm sure you guys already know that by now. What's up? Hey, buddy. Good to be here. Good brought you a little present. Thank you. You bring this brisket from Florida? No, you know, I, I, I waited and got a Texas brisket. I didn't want to offend you guys, you know? Perfect. Well, what we're going to do today, I, I mentioned we're going to do what we call a Texas style. So there is a list that comes out called the Texas Monthly Top 50 Barbecue Joints List. It comes out every four years. And this is not your standard list of like Southern Living or whatever. This is the list. People spend their whole lives trying to get on this list. And if you make the top 50, it will change your life. Uh, if I blindfolded you and took you to anyone on the top 50, it would be one of the best barbecue experiences of your life. So this is going to be a Texas style brisket on a Traeger grill. It's going to be a pretty aggressive trim, uh, pretty simple seasoning, and a very simple cook process. But we're going to give you just a few very key tips along the way that will elevate your brisket game. Whether you are a beginner or an expert, I think you will learn something from this method. Absolutely. And the cool thing is Chad and I have both competed a lot. He competed a lot more than I did. And he cooks brisket in a, in a different manner. He cooks a meat side up brisket. I cook fat side up. We'll get into that. Um, but as we go along in this process, Chad will kind of offer some feedback on, you know, why meat side up or why he does that. And whatever you want to do, it's, it's always say, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat. It's however you want to do it. Um, whatever your preference is, there's no wrong way. As long as you like the final product, that's all that matters. So I'm just showing you another method today. At so, the end of the day, as long as we're sitting around a good platter of barbecue, who cares how it got there? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, and, that, and that's the beauty of it. You know, that's why I love barbecue so much is you can have two, three, four different ways to get to it, but it all ends up turning out delicious. Yeah, and one of the main things we're going to talk about today is time frame. I encourage people, don't focus on the recipe says this, 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 I got to do it exactly. When I go to cook brisket, I look at how long do I have, when do I want to have it ready, and I adjust my method to that time, and we'll talk about that as we go through this. You know, let's just jump right in. Um, this is a full packer brisket comprised of two muscles, a flat on top, point on the bottom. Uh, this is a prime brisket. Uh, it's not very big. It's about 12 pounds. The briskets that we're using today um, are not real big, so real manageable size. I'm going to overview what I'm going to do, and I'm going to completely trim this while you guys watch, and Chad and I can talk during that process. But I mentioned I cook fat side up. So on the meat side, first I'm going to remove this decal. Um, I'm going to trim down the edge to just remove this kind of oxidization to just clean it up. I'm going to flip the brisket over. I'm going to create what I call a mohawk. I'm going to remove this. Then I'm going to shave the fat here down to about a quarter inch and then I'm going to shape it and lastly just whittle anything else that's hanging off because I want a really aerodynamic brisket. But I'll tell you up front, I said it was aggressive. Here's why. Barbecue is a religion in Texas, and if you're going to cook brisket, every bite has to be perfect. If it's not, if something's overcooked, that person's never going to make this famous list. So you may think I'm trimming this further than you want to trim it. You don't have to do that. I'm going to trim it aggressively because I'm going to be left with a really nice, even piece of meat that will cook great, and I'm not going to waste anything. I'm going to take my fat, I'm going to smoke it and, and create beef tallow, and I'm going to take every piece of meat off of this, I'm going to put it in a grinder, and I'm going to make amazing ground meat that I'll use in burgers, I can use in sausage, guisada, my kids' spaghetti, you know, whatever you want. So 100% utilization of this. So I don't worry about what I trim off to make an amazing brisket personally. No, I'm, I'm the same way. And you hit on something, Matt, there, regardless of how you trim or what you do, a nice, even piece of meat just cooks so much more better, so much more uniform. Um, so either way, that, that's what you're looking for at the end of the day is a nice, uniform piece of meat level that's going to cook well and cook evenly throughout the whole process. I completely agree. I'll tell you guys that since I cook fat side up, unless there's any like hard stuff that's kind of sticking out, I don't really worry too much about cleaning the top up because this really loose fat is going to render. So I'm focused on kind of the hard stuff right now before I flip it over. And all I'm doing is I'm using, um, I'm using just a, a really sharp, kind of sharp boning knife, just a flexible boning knife, really inexpensive. Um, Victorian X, you can get it on Amazon, no big deal. Yeah, and when it comes to trimming brisket, two things that are your friend, a sharp knife and a cold piece of meat. And today I came with like an eh sharp knife and a eh 
Cold brisket. <laughs> well, you know that sharp knife, you know, Don made sure you dialed in. Yeah, it's sharp enough. All right, so I'm gonna flip over. On that, though. And what I do is I grab, I, I create what's called a mohawk here. I'm reaching my fingers under this fat seam that connects the point and the flat, and I'm creating a mohawk. I'm gonna take the entire thing off. A lot of people aren't used to doing this at the beginning because they think it's a lot of meat, but you'll see at the end, it's ac I'm actually not going to remove that much meat. Now, see, this is new. I haven't seen this mohawk technique before, but I, I like it. It seems a lot easier than the way that I dig out the uh, so separation of the point. I used to dig this out, and yeah. then you're left with something that looks like lips, to be yeah. honest with you. Yep. And that's okay, but now I've got, now I've got to clean this up a little bit. See, it's much more smooth. And when you look sure. at the anatomy of this, it's actually not that much meat. No. And so for people that are scared, what I'll do is I'll take my knife. I usually will do this after I've trimmed my brisket. And I'll cut out, you know, the meat. Here's the meat that I took out. It's, it's you know, a few ounces. Yep. And that'll be great grind. Well, and one thing I don't think most people know, if you've got a burger joint that you love and, and they do fresh grinds, I guarantee there's a little bit of brisket in there and probably some chuck, maybe some sirloin, but there's always brisket in a good homemade burger. 100%. And this, so the teaching point for everybody and, and why, you know, I mentioned why this is important. We have to do this to, to make this brisket, you know, allow this brisket to be like a really uniform shape to, to cook really nicely. But all these barbecue joints have to use this. Food costs at a restaurant are very True. high, but we can't just throw that away. You know, right? This was four bucks a pound or whatever. So this has to go into something else. And that's why Texas is known for such great sausage. Um, I've got a buddy who owns Dane's in Fort Worth and he makes the best burger I've ever had. And this is what he uses with it. Yep. But you can use this at home and it's awesome. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna trim up, just trimming up the edges here and then I'm gonna cut the fat off. So while I'm doing this, why don't you, why don't you help talk a little bit about the other method? So meat yeah, side so, up and where so that for comes me, from. So, so kind of where I came from brisket wise is I like to cook fat side up. And uh, the main reason for meat, that- Meat side up. Or meat side up, sorry, meat side up. Because the main reason for that is I wanted from a competition point of view to have that bark and color on the, the top of the brisket, right? Because when we slice that and turn it in, uh, we want our bark on the top. Because uh, a lot of times we'll do an aggressive trim on the bottom with a competition brisket, or you can end up leaving some of the fat and just evening it out, and you'll end up taking the fat off before you even start slicing to go in the box. Uh, so just two totally different ways. I think the one thing that's way different from comp than like this Texas style brisket that's kind of born out of restaurants is restaurants are holding that brisket six, eight, 12, um, some places 24 yeah. hours. Um, and competition brisket, you're really not. You're trying to come off the pit, and then once you're off the pit, you're wanting that thing to rest an hour, two hours at the max, and you're slicing and turning it in. So just two different uh, needs, so two different techniques. Agreed, and you know, when I look at social media and see how people cook brisket, you know, there's a lot of people, they, a lot, I, I don't know, if they, I'd say the majority of people are cooking meat side up that's just that's yeah. just what i see uh and it's kind of funny you know it's just a different perspective but i'm just kind of trimming down to make this a little more a little more even uh what's interesting to me is uh barbecue joints in texas they call meat side up upside down you know, <laughs> it, it kind of shocked me when i heard that but anyway i haven't heard that before that's funny yeah we were doing a video here with a friend that owns a, a texas monthly top 50 barbecue joint and that's actually what he said um, I'm going to round out the top. This is good meat down here, so this is probably one of the more um, excessive things that I will do, but I want to I round this out. But again, this is going into grind, so I don't worry about it because I don't want anything that's not aerodynamic. Well, and the other thing here, too, is we're doing a Texas brisket, whereas in competition, we're usually looking for burn-ins also to put in the that's box. Right, that's right. Because we can put slices and burn-ins in the box. So we get pretty protective around the point. Uh, and making sure there's enough good point meat there. Whereas, you know, when you're looking at Texas restaurant style, it's lean side, fatty side, right? That's exactly right. Well, it's only fatty side for me, but <laughs> some people do like, do like the lean. The test of a true cook is if you can cook the lean properly. Yeah. So we're in a lot better shape. I've got one more thing I've got to do, and it's kind of round this out, and here's why. This flat is super thick on this side where the fat was, but over here on this side, you see the flat is really, really thin. So when I go to pick out a brisket, I'm trying to find the thickest flat possible. But what you do is just take your hand here and press it down, and you can see the difference. It's dramatic. So we need to take a pretty good cut right here, get rid of this thin piece. If you don't, when you're cooking your brisket, I know you guys have probably cooked a brisket before, and you see it kind of pucker up, and you start to see a puddle. Those puddles are when something is uneven. So I'm going to shape this down and just round it out 
and then we're going to be pretty good to go unless I've missed something. And so here, if you're doing this meat side up, what I will do is instead of, of trimming that that hard, um, I will actually take some of our trimmings, and when I go to put it on the Traeger, I will use them as what I call meat shims. Yeah. And put them under the thin side so that the, the brisket sits even to avoid the pooling that kind of you're talking about. The meat shims. All right, so here's the meat that I'm, here's the quality meat that I have pulled off of here yeah, that, I'll, that I'll show you guys. And, you know, I tell you just from my years of teaching, when I first started doing this for some people, they thought it was, you know, pretty dang aggressive, I would say. But again, that's going to go in a grinder. Or if you don't have a grinder, you can use a knife and you can do different things yes. with it. But go buy yourself a $99 grinder. It'll be one of the best investments that, frankly, you've probably ever and made. And the beauty of this, too, is this type of trim is this is going to be a long cook. You're going to hold it. You're going to be ready to serve it to your family and friends. You can literally take this out of the wrap and get to slicing. It's not like other other cuts or other trims where you've got to take a bunch of other stuff off before you can even get to the get to serving folks. So here's much better shaped brisket. You know, if I'm sitting here not on a camera with a clock running in my head, I would definitely whittle a few more things. But this is much more even. We'll cook nice and uniform. Absolutely. Uh, and so I'm I'm happy with it. No, it looks gorgeous. All right, well, let's talk about cooking. Let's talk about seasoning, and we'll talk about cooking in just a little bit. So, in with my favorite condiment. I oh, know. I do use a binder most of the time. If you follow Meat Church, Meat Church YouTube, you know that over the years I've said they're optional, and this certainly is optional. I'll start on the meat side. Um, but in Texas, it's pretty common to use mustard as a binder, yes, on brisket. Uh, another thing that's pretty common is uh, pickle juice. There are places like Evie Mays in Lubbock, that will just, in Lubbock, Texas, that will just dunk this in pickle juice. So what does a binder do? It's not just about the seasoning adhering right now, but it's about keeping that seasoning adhered during the cook. Um, and if you think that this is a little crazy, I'm sure you've heard of Franklin's Barbecue. They do the same thing. So this is very common. It doesn't affect the flavor profile. You can use anything you want to bind. This is just a good option. See, I sit here and look, and I'm like, <laughs> yep. that, that is what happens with brisket. You always find a little something here and there you can take off. All right, now Texas barbecue is known to be salt and pepper, but I'll tell you that I know just about everybody on the Texas Monthly Top 50 and a whole bunch of them, if not most of them, are not just salt and pepper. I would say it's salt and pepper based with a little something else. There are people that just do salt and pepper, but you know, you've got people that do salt and pepper and then they do Lowry's. You've got people that their rub is mostly salt and pepper, but they have a little other stuff in it. Um, I did a six part series on my YouTube channel, six different barbecue joints, and none of those, they're on the top 50, none of those use just salt and pepper, just to illustrate my point. So we mostly are going to season with our holy cow, which is salt, pepper, garlic, it's 80% salt and pepper. And something I learned through our competition days, I have an all purpose, um, holy gospel, that I'm just going to put a light layer of that on, that's optional. But what I found was this was a limited edition rub. And when I was going to get rid of it, all the comp cooks came out of nowhere and said, I need 50 pounds of that. I, <laughs> I use it in my brisket program. But mostly we're going to do um, salt and pepper. And while I'm doing that, um, Chad, can maybe you can elaborate on some of the Traeger seasonings that I love as well. Yeah. Give so, people options. Yeah, so on the uh, on brisket, on the, on the Traeger seasonings, I've used a lot of uh, beef rub in the past. The prime rib rub to me is awesome, and I'll do a, a stack – um, probably my favorite go-to would be a stack of the coffee rub from Traeger and the uh, prime rib rub. Be sure to get the edges. Uh, you can use the board to get the edges, which I will after I've uh, used my clean hand on these bottles uh, to kind of to kind of do that. But basically, I go two to one, three to one, and I, I like to let this sit here. I like to do this on a Friday night if I'm cooking on a Saturday. Just a light application of that. Um, but for here, we're probably going to let it sit 30 minutes and put it on. But try to give it at least an hour is my yeah, I agree. advice to people. Kind of let it soak in. Let that bark start kind of pre-building on the board, if you will. Well, use, your, use your board. Use this gorgeous rosewood block, in this case, um, to pick up that excess seasoning that you've, that you've used. And there we go. Looks right. All right, we're going to let that adhere. And then we will come back and we'll talk cooking. Okay, well the seasoning is adhered, so it's time to tell everybody how we're gonna cook this. Yes, let's do it. And I love, by the way, there's so much pepper and holy cow. I love the contrast of the black pepper. Black pepper's key, it catches smoke, so sometimes we even put a little extra pepper on first before we put holy cow, but that's a Texas thing. So, 
Anyways, let's talk about the cook. So cooking brisket's actually very simple. There's just a few things you gotta pay attention to. What I tell people up front is this piece of meat's about 40 degrees and we're taking it to when it's tender, which I'm gonna just hypothetically say that's 203 degrees. And it's a really easy journey to get there. But again, I mentioned earlier, what I do is I base my cook on how much time I have. A standard cook for me, a brisket of this size, if you cook it at just say 250 degrees, you're gonna get it cooked in no more than 10 hours, probably even a little bit less. Rest it for however long you wanna rest it, at least an hour, and then you're gonna jump in and eat. That's what most people do. Most people get up on a Saturday, I think. They throw this on the Traeger early, and they wanna eat it for supper. So you keep that in mind, but with that said, we're gonna be a little more complex with this because time allows, and again, you don't have to do all of these steps, mm -hmm. but at least lets you know how people make the best brisket in the world, in case you wanna know. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna put this brisket in, instead of going 250, 250 is kinda like my normal barbecue temperature. I'm actually gonna go a little lower for a little a period of time. So I'm gonna put this in 220 degrees, fat side up with super smoke, and we're gonna let it ride for a couple hours before we bump up to 250 because I have the time and I wanna put some serious smoke on it. Um, I'm gonna do that for two hours, but I have a video on the Meat Church YouTube channel called The Weekday Brisket, oh. we've actually got two of them, where we put a brisket in overnight on the Traeger at like 200 degrees and we just let it roll all night and don't touch it. Wake up the next morning, we wrap it, we increase to 250, it finishes and we're eating by lunch. See, and to me, that's one of the benefits of the Traeger. You're not having to stoke this thing, you're not having to throw a log every 45 minutes or an hour. And man, you're sleeping. So why not let it do the work and yeah. get that extra smoke that you want and that, that and you know, it's gonna build a, a bigger bark, it's gonna have a better smoke profile, just, I love that thought of being able to do that. Yeah, so it's it, super simple. I mean, I've got you know cookers of all types, and yeah. um, and this is this is a way that allows me to have brisket during the week without yeah. having to run the fire on one of my offsets. Absolutely, you know, like you said. So the preview of what we're going to do, we're going to go two hours at two twenty, then we're going to increase to two fifty, and we're going to let this brisket build bark and you know just start to render the fat. We're going to go all the way to one seventy five, and we're going to show you that, and we're going to wrap and butcher paper at one seventy five. Um, and we're just gonna let it keep cooking, rendering out that fat, and when it gets to say 203, or whatever tender is, uh, which is usually around 203, then we're pulling it off to rest. So super duper simple, not spritzing along the way, very, very easy. So we've got our Ironwood XL set up with a brisket blend, uh, which is a great blend. I like, personally, when I'm cooking brisket, I want heavy smoke. So you can use mesquite, um, you can use hickory. Some people like pecan, which is a little less smoky, but those are my choices. Yeah, you're still looking for your hardwoods, your high BTUs, just that nice, hot, deep fire that just really, I mean, to me, that's hardwoods and brisket, that's hand in hand, you know yeah. what I mean? People ask me all the time, how do you build bark? Well, you know, it's the reaction from the seasoning, the smoke, the thyme, you know, let your seasoning adhere overnight if you have the time, that helps. A lot of pepper, that helps. Heavy smoke wood, that helps. Longer time in the cooker, that helps. Consistent temp, I think running a yeah. consistent temp, not having these peaks and valleys, I think that helps a lot with bark. Well, let's drop these, let's put this one in, and then we're gonna show you the next step and you're gonna see that bark uh, for yourself. So I'm gonna let you grab this I'm one. I'm on it. Fat side up. On that, the that's the hard part, I almost put it meat side up. All right, fat side up. Or there we go. Perfect. Now, when I'm going fat side up, you know, I like to do it on a second shelf to kind of get it away from the heat source at the bottom. Oh, Some gorgeous. of you may not have that second shelf, so it kind of depends on the, the cooker that you have, but I, I prefer to go up on the second shelf. So this brisket here has already been cooking for, um, I think close to nine hours. I think we were two hours at 220 or so, and then about seven, I know we we're two hours at 220, and then we bumped up to 250 until we got to 175. And I'm gonna put this on the paper here. And what you guys can see here, it has great bark. Um, Amazing. You know, not real big brisket, so we trimmed them down. Yeah. But it's got beautiful bark on it. So if you ask how to get bark, the keys I just told you is how you get to this point. But using your instant read thermometer, probing in the flat, you don't need to check in the point. Always probe here, you can use a meter, you can use an instant read, whatever. We're at 175. Cooking barbecue's visual at first. You wanna look for what I call visual cues. And my visual cue is this bark looks great. It looks great. And then I, I used to say wrap at 165. I've learned over the years, I like wrapping in, in the mid 170s. Uh, but before I show you how to wrap, that depends on your time as well. If you're in a time crunch, you could wrap sooner, you could bump your temp. Um, if you're in a real time crunch, you could wrap in foil because that will, that will speed you up and cook even quicker. Yep. But in Texas, we wrap in unwaxed butcher paper because the paper can breathe, it's permeable. So let's do that now. This is cider vinegar. 
And first thing I'm going to do is spray right here where the brisket's going to lay, and then I'm going to spray all over the paper. Should I spray my camera, guys? <laughs> yes. So what you're doing here is you are making this paper more pliable to help you with the wrap. And we're using Traeger's 18 inch paper overlapped by, you know, a couple inches. And then I'm gonna put a little cider vinegar. It's the only time I've applied any moisture to this brisket. I did not spritz it during the cook at all. Moisture is the enemy of bark. If yes. you choose to spritz, you can, but the more you spritz, the slower your bark's gonna develop. Um, so I'm doing it now to add moisture. Some people put tallow in here now. I don't, I'm pretty simple. I'm gonna wrap it up. And this is gonna be like swaddling a baby. So we're gonna come over the top, tuck it underneath, and then do the corners like a paper football. If you did that as a kid. Real tight, okay, so this is very tight so far. Okay, then fold it over, keeping everything as tight as possible. Tight is your key. Boom. Pull it to you really tight, bam. Like a little Christmas present, old boy. That's what happens when you have four kids, you change a lot of diapers. <laughs> All right, so we're good to go with this one. This is going to go back in, um, and then we're going to show them the next stage. Yeah. Real quick while Matt's doing that, you know, that is a huge difference in talking about the compare and contrast between a Texas brisket and a competition brisket. You know, competition-wise, we always use foil um, just because it helps us get to that finish quicker. Um, but another thing, Texas brisket's going back to it being restaurants that, that have kind of created this. They've got to think about holding brisket and you do not want to hold in foil foil is great yeah. for braising and finishing the brisket but you do not want to hold for long periods in foil because it will completely melt that bark because it's a bark. pure braise so this brisket's done we tempted it right before uh we shot this scene but i'm gonna tell you what i'm looking for um, if you're using a meter have it inserted again in the flat as i mentioned or an instant read this is tough to teach on camera but what we do is we actually grab the brisket where the flat and the point come together and we squeeze it and you, it just takes experience of doing this, but you learn that when you squeeze a certain point and the way the give is, it just, you can tell that it's tender. You can pick it up. I can tell how this brisket is bending, that this brisket is done. And, it, it, and to me, one easy way to learn that is, I, I call it the butter test. Take a stick of butter, leave it out on the counter for a couple hours, take your instant read thermometer, slide it in. It should slide in easy, have a little bit of resistance in the middle. Not much. Not much at all. But when you feel it and you go, okay, that brisket's where I want it to be, then grab it and, and, and feel yeah. how the brisket, and start drawing those two uh, parallels and understanding that. And it's just, once again, it's reps. So what I'll do is right here in the flat is where I like to check it. Your, your temperature is just a guide. It's not the end all be all. So this is just over 200. That doesn't mean the brisket's completely perfect. You actually need to probe it in a few different places, uh, but you're pretty close. So yeah. You're close enough that the brisket's going to be good. Your family's going to enjoy a bit. But if you're looking for perfection, you check in a few places. Sure. And then you move into the rest. And this is where I'm going to get into a really key tip. Most people that cook barbecue are so focused on getting it to this point, and they think they're done. But what I've learned over the years is the rest, a.k.a. the decrease in internal temperature, is just as important as the increase in temperature. So what I find through my teaching, and I know you teach too, is people will take their brisket and they'll throw it in a Yeti, uh, for an hour and then they eat it. That's fine, but the best way to do this, you want to slice brisket at 140 internal temperature. So what I like to do on a great day like this, I'll leave this brisket on the counter just like this at ambient temperature and I will let it rest down to 140. And on a warm day, that will actually take you close to three hours. Yeah. In the winter, it's, it's quick, uh, but it, it, you'd be shocked at how long it takes. But real quick, let me tell you how the guys in Texas do it. Barbecue joints, pull these briskets off their pit, they put them on trays and speed racks and they rest them down to 140. And then they go in a 140 degree warmer overnight to be served at lunch the next day. That's how, so that's a 24 hour process yeah. to make a brisket. 99% of you aren't gonna do that and I'm not saying that you need to do it. Um, if you want to leverage your Traeger, you can hit keep warm and it goes down to 165. That's not 140, but it's better than just eating it just like this. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do for purposes of video is we're going to leave it out here on the counter until it rests down to 140, and then we're going to slice it and see how we did. Sounds good to me. All right, brisket has rested down to, should be about 140. Mm. Nailed it. Mm. Nailed it. Boom. All right. Let's see how we did. Nice and moist. 
it is moist. Moist is my favorite word in barbecue. Only, Besides succulent? Uh, mm, right, there with, right there with spatchcock. Oh, that spatchcock's great. There we go. Whoop. Okay, save that paper. Let's see if we, I don't know if we can ring any out or not. So I tell you I don't cook with tallow, but if you got any residual in there, not a lot, you might as well put it on the brisket. Now I'm learning you can't do that with foil, oh boy. Yeah, that'd be trouble, huh? So the thing with uh, you know any residual tallow, it's gonna make your brisket look super sexy, uh, especially if you're putting it on the gram. I told you earlier with all that fat, we were gonna render down tallow. This is what it looks like. Uh, while I don't cook with it, it's good to have on your block because brisket dies what I call a really quick death. Uh, you should slice it as you eat it, and uh, which you can do when, when you, you know, I'll show you in a second, but after you've sliced it, put the meat uh, board side down, meat side on the board to keep it from oxidizing, and then having a little tallow on your board will help with that as well. So that's a good tool and a, and a good way to use it. The number one use for tallow, by the way, that's how I get these locks. Uh, I gave up that secret last year, so. Yeah, it smells a little Not like bad. tallow. Smell, well, I like it. Smell beefy. So it doesn't look bad. I think we did all right, huh? No, oh, it looks good. Beautiful bark. It's gorgeous. Feels nice and tender. And you can definitely tell how much more that bark held up in the in the paper over a foil. Yeah, I mean, his bark is great, by the way. And for those of you that cook in foil, if you decided to wrap in foil, um, during the rest process, you could open it up and you could put it back in the pit and you could kind of get some of that, to some of that back. Um, bark back. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to slice the entire thing for you. Uh, with the anatomy of a brisket, basically in the flat, I would slice this direction. I'm going to make one big slice here. I'm going to spin the point and then, uh, well, let me just show you that. So right here with the point and flat come together. I wonder how we did. I think we did strong to quite strong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If I squeeze that, let me tell you, which I won't do. Oh, do we do. have to do that? No, we're not going to do that. Please don't do that. We're not going to do that. Thank so you. So here's how you would trim this brisket. You would spin this point this direction, uh, and you would slice like this. Yep. Super duper simple. So we're going to do a couple things. Let's get a little bit of the lean. So we, we got into where we could get some lean. You see this, yeah. the lean and the point, which is what I like. Yep. Yeah. Got um, the great dividing line there in the fat. Oh, and you're putting that Texas slice on it too. A little thick. Woo! That one's too thick. Sorry. Sorry. See, you got in my head. Mm. Let's see here. Pick it up. It's you. You want it to hold oh, together, oh, oh, oh. which it does. I mean, and that then is. You want it to bend, you know, which it does. It's a little thick on the slice. How do you say tender is a mother's love? Yeah, this is this is more tender than your mother's love, which uh, is really tender from what I hear. Janice Ward, and then great woman. Then you go with the pull. It's super easy. Yep. And right, right here. Before we bite into this, so I need to bring this point back. Why do we fat side up? Why do I prefer that? This fat, when it's nice and yellowed, that that amount of fat on top of the brisket is what I prefer. That's my favorite bite. Yeah. As long as it's warm. And you want that, you want the fat to be yellowed like that. That's, that's properly cooked. All right, enough talking. Oh my God. Oh, wow. That's damn good. <laughs> that is damn good. Mm. Well, we're not done yet. So well, let's we're not go, done yet. All right, I'm gonna save myself. The traditional Kansas City burn-ins, the end of the brisket here. Mm -hmm. Golly, look at that. Woo! I wouldn't be serving this to your neighbors. I'd be keeping this part. Well, yeah, no myself. kidding. They got to be damn good neighbors. Cool. Bro, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. That's delicious. Okay. Super tender, mm. smoky. I think enough pepper. I mean, I'm partial to my seasonings. That's, that the is bark, mine. man. The bark. You get that velvety man. brisket bite, and then that bark just kind of comes. Oh, man, it's delicious. And look how easy that was. Super duper mm. simple. Nice smoke around it, perfectly rendered fat. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm mad at that. So the, See, what, you, you can just show the, the glistening guys. You don't have to squeeze it all out. Just show it off a little bit. squeeze it. So after you've sliced, do your brisket like that. Do your brisket like that until you slice more to keep it Oh, coming. that's a great tip. And this oxidizes so quick. Like, look at the difference. That Always quick. say it just dies on the board. Yep. Super fast. Well, that was fun. Man, that was amazing. That was and so tasty. good. Awesome. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll I'm see you next week. I'm having a bite of brisket. That's pretty damn good.